Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, and I want to again welcome our Attorney General uh, to Ward 5. You are always welcome here. And I will say, and I mean this uh, honestly, uh, the Attorney General has been a great partner in the few months that we have both been in office. As he mentioned, we hosted a public safety meeting in the Brentwood community uh, following uh, a string of violent gun incidents there. And the Attorney General's office was there to be a resource, uh, not only to our office, but to residents. Um, and he's here tonight listening, uh, which I think is the best posture for any elected official, uh, because residents have uh, insightful perspective around how we can address a number of issues. I, too, want to recognize our elected officials and our ANCs in the room. If you could just wave your hand again. I'm seeing ANCs uh, from all across our ward, and it is great to see you. Um, I am not going to be up here long, and I do have another obligation, but I would be remiss not to just acknowledge the key partnership between the council and the attorney general's office. And I want to address the elephant in the room, and that is public safety. Uh, public safety is top of mind for a number of residents. And I will tell you, uh, the attorney general has been a great partner in those conversations around what can we do, what are we doing, what are we doing? What is working? What isn't working? How do we explore uh, new options? And so I just want to highlight some of the things uh, that we are doing. Uh, and then there are other decisions to come down the pipeline. As the Attorney General mentioned, uh, we recently, or I authored the establishment of reasonable controls for the firearm industry legislation uh, with direct consultation with the Attorney General's office. And what that does is empowers our Attorney General's office to go after, sue, and hold accountable gun manufacturers uh, for the violence that is perpetuated by firearms in our city uh, and the scourge that is caused by guns all across this country. As you know, that is a ongoing debate around uh, our Second Amendment rights. Um, and while it may be a right to own a firearm legally, we know that too many of firearms are ending up in the wrong hands illegally. Uh, with the uh, proliferation of ghost guns and many other things. And so having this as just one tool in our tool belt, it is not to say that that is the only thing that we're pursuing, but one tool empowers our attorney general to hold gun manufacturers accountable. Uh, what we are also doing at, at that back table, you will see that we have published our Ward 5 public safety uh, plan and strategy. My office is working in concert with a number of agencies from MPD to DEH, to the Attorney General's office, to uh, the ONE's office, and so many others to coordinate and strategize around how we're going to bring more resources into the Ward 5 community. But this is what we need. We need a comprehensive public safety strategy. Now, that is the council member speaking, and I'm asking you to join me in calling on our mayor to put forth a comprehensive public safety strategy. And what do I mean by that? It's not to get bogged down in the politics and the finger pointing. But it is to say that we can do all we can in Ward 5. But if we don't have a strategy around how we're going to curb violence citywide, uh, we are going to be trying to take a mop to the ocean, if you will. And so we need to be thinking creatively, innovatively, around how we're addressing the attrition problem at MPD, uh, making sure they have the resources that they need, making sure our attorney general is empowered and has the resources that it needs, making sure that we leave with a public safety and public health approach where appropriate, uh, that we expand violence interruption programs. I would also tout that the Attorney General's uh, violence interruption programs have been very successful. There is one in the Ivy City and Trinidad community that cure the streets. Um, and I recently did a public safety walk in that area. They have not had gun violence in the last nearly 60 days. And that is a record for that community. And so when we talk about addressing the violence uh, that we're seeing, we have to have all of our cards on the table, and we need everything at our disposal. So that is one thing. And the last thing I would just say, as we are going through this budget, it is increasingly important um, that my colleagues and I continue to hear from you. Uh, we are in the markups through committees right now, and very soon we'll have the budget where the entire council is voting. Uh, we are making sure that our public safety agencies have the support and the resources that they need. But we also need to hear from you because violence interruption programs are on the chopping block, as well as many other uh, resources like uh, emergency rental assistance and legal aid for tenants. And, uh, and the list goes on. And we know 
that if you don't provide housing and food and safety, uh, that then promotes other things to happen. And so we have to think comprehensively about these things. So that is my uh, tidbit there. I would also say on the back of that table, you have information around how you can get in touch with my office. We are here as a resource. Uh, Carlos, wherever, oh, there's Carlos. Carlos is our coordinate, constituent service coordinator, if you raise your hand. Carlos uh, not only lives in this neighborhood, but he grew up in this neighborhood as a native Washingtonian. Um, and he is here to be at your service as are all of my team members. Um, and so with that, I am really excited. Uh, my team is going to be staying on hand even though I have to run. And I look forward to continuing to work alongside the Attorney General to make sure that we are addressing your concerns, uh, but more importantly, putting into action the things you will want to see from the Attorney General's office and all of your elected officials. So again, welcome to Ward 5, and thank you for being here. Mm -hmm.